Are you struggling saving with low income? In this video, I'm going to share with you in five ways you can start saving today. Hi there, my name is Michael and this is The Real Michael Berry Channel where I have a passion for seeing millennials being successful with their money. If you're new here, I want you to subscribe to the channel for future content and I want you to click on the bell notification so that way you know when I make a video. When I graduated college, I moved out of my parents' house two months after graduation um, when the original plan was to be there for about six months. And the reason why is because I was sick and tired of washing dishes. I didn't want to follow these rules that I didn't think I had to because I was in their household, but I was paying for everything myself. Um, and that decision caused me to struggle or have to struggle for two years. And what I'm talking about, I had a $1,000 rent, I had a $400 card note, buying my own food, paying my utilities. And these bills could have been avoided if I would have just stayed in my parents' house. As of right now, 30% of millennials live with your parents. And if you're with your parents right now, one thing you can do is stay with them as long as you can. Yes, you may have to pay rent to them, but that money you're saving on bills that you're avoiding can, can do wonders for you as far as financial freedom. This can be a nice savings account when you're ready to move out. Now, if you're with them, one thing you need to have in mind is an extra strategy. How long do you want to be with your parents? What's your savings account? What, what are you comfortable with as far as moving out, having a nice emergency fund? So that way, when you leave, you have something to fall back on if you need it. If you're not with your parents, don't let your, 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 your pride keep you struggling. If you need to move back home, do it. That's perfectly fine if your parents will allow you to. Because on top of that, you'll be able to save a lot more. And if you're not, one thing you have to start doing is start working on your budget. You need to start taking away expenses that you don't need so that way you can focus on saving as much as possible. When you have low income, the problem is not that you're having a bad budget or you're spending on other things. It's that you have little, little room for error. So that every time you buy something, it needs to be precise. It needs to be on your budget so that way you can make sure that you have enough to cover bills and cover an emergency if something happens. The food, do not eat up your paycheck. It's so easy going out to get fast food, going out to get lunch, and it adds up over time. Because it adds up so fast, you have to become very specialized as far as going to the grocery store, making your own meals, cooking at home, packing lunches, because you have to understand your habits are everything. The better your habits are, that's going to affect you long term. If you're bad at going out buying groceries, you're going to be bad at saving money over time. So you have to become very specialized with that. And for me, I used to budget $200 a month just for eating out. And as crazy as that sounds, I could use that money to buy food. I could have used that money to make my own lunches and save money over time. But I was wasting money. I was just throwing it out the window because I wanted to clear my head and get away from the work site and then come back later. Number three is having a budget. If you don't have a budget right now, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're spending money and you don't know where it's going. Like I said before, your behaviors, your habits are everything. This has to be something that is second nature because if it fits the budget, you can do it. If your friends are going now and it's not part of the entertainment part of your budget, you got to wait till next month. You have to have an extreme mindset because your goal is so important that if you miss by a little bit, you miss by a lot. What I mean by that is you have to be so precision, so sniper to the fact that if you miss one month, that's going to set you back for the course of the year. Because we're working on low income, you're already at a low margin of error, so you can't make any mistakes. So this has to be pretty much your financial Bible. You have to stick to it so that way that little by little, you're making progress over time. Now, you may have to rearrange your budget depending on your spending habits, but that just depends on you in particular. So you have to sit down and be realistic and then be able to stick to what you set. It all comes down to discipline. The more discipline you have, the more successful you'll be. If you lack in discipline, well, then you'll notice that your budget is not working for you and you have to make some changes to it. When it comes to your utilities, these are things that are in your direct control. And I'm talking water bill, light bill, gas bill. For example, with us, we have free weekends when it comes to our electricity. So you got to be very strategic. Most of our clothes being washed and being dried are done on the weekends. Most of the TV being washed, most of the work being done on the computer is done on the weekends. Now, we do that stuff in the middle of the week. But like, for example, I don't touch the AC in the middle of the week. That stuff, it stays where the temperature is almost room temperature all, all week long. So these are things that not only you have control over, but if you need to reevaluate your plan, you can do that. If you're using a room and you're done with that room, turn the lights off. Unplug the computer. Turn the TV off. Don't let the shower run for 30, 40 minutes before you get into the shower because that's money down the drain. That's money you will never get back. 
So you got to be focused on and you got to be very strategic on how you use your money throughout the course of the week. When it comes to my fifth point, I want to talk about cell phones and I want to talk about cars. And I want to start by saying that it's an unpopular opinion, but you do not need the newest model cell phone or car when they come out. If your car is working, it gets you to point A to point B. It may not look the best, but it's paid off. Hey, keep what you have as long as it's reliable. Now, if it's a question of reliability, if your car is not working as it should be, then okay, I understand, hey, you may need to upgrade, you may need to get your newer vehicle. When it comes to your phone, if your phone is working, as long as you can make phone calls, you can text, it has a cracked screen, don't worry about it, it's working. Unless you lost it, unless something happens, then you need to upgrade, and then I understand. But as long as it's functional, use what you have. Don't go out looking for a bill. Because if you buy a new phone, that's going to cost you $1,000. If you buy a new car, that's a monthly bill that's coming in every single month. Like I said, don't look for a bill unless you have to get one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already, I want you to click on the bell notification. I want you to click on the subscribe button as well. See you in the next video.